Um, I'm going to start off and welcome our first speaker, who is Tyler Kelly. I'm going to try and put this in the chat. Um, yeah, so Tyler Kelly uh, is an assistant professor and URI Future Leaders Fellow at the University of Birmingham. Um, Uh, before Tyler obtained their PhD at the University of Pennsylvania in 2014, and then held an NSF postdoc at Cambridge, Tyler's research is in algebraic geometry mirror symmetry, studying the mirror symmetry of landau ginzburg models. They also are active in the LGBTQ plus STEM community as a member of both the LGBTQ STEM Project Steering Committee and the London Mathematical Society's Women and Diversity in Mathematics Committee. committee. Uh, welcome, Tyler. Uh, thanks, Ron. Um, so uh, first, um, uh, this is my title. Um, okay, now I'm spotlighted. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so uh, first, I want to thank uh, Ron, Anthony, and Juliet for organizing this meeting. Um, hi. Uh, so um, it's, um, it's really meaningful to have these type of days um, because there's many points in doing this. Uh, find it, it's important to celebrate research advances done by the LGBTQ mathematic, uh, community in mathematics. Um, it's important to find community where you feel comfortable being a mathematician. And it's, informal, it's important as queer people to have informal discussions on careers in math and navigating that. And I think that the, the cross-section of talks will do all of these things. So I'm going to try to do my part so I'm going to try to talk out of many corners of my mouth at the same time to try to give interesting things for junior people as well as senior people. And I see Katrine like nodding their head. So the, the vibe is right, right? So, um, and, and, and lastly, I think it's important to enjoy math as a, in a safe space. So I'm going to try to uh, tell you my enjoyment of mirror symmetry throughout the next 30 minutes. Okay. So um, first off, like, what, what what am I like? What what is what? What's my mathematical interests? Um, I research mirror symmetry. Um, so I have to tell you what mirror symmetry is. Um, it's roughly stated some mathematical research discipline that aims to establish theorems inspired by a duality and string theory. In particular, the string duality is known as T duality. Uh, and, and in particular, the way that mathematicians like to use this duality is to link symplectic geometry and algebraic geometry. Uh, and then the proxies in order to do this are we use invariants. Uh, this is a relatively new field being around for the last 33 years um, with a, a paper by Green and Plesser uh, called Duality in Moduli Space. And um, then it quickly gained traction uh, in the 90s. Um, so maybe I'm going to tell you about the objects that I really care about, uh, and then I'm going to give you what these invariants can be um, and give you a bunch of these type of objects, and you can choose whatever level you want to build your mirror from, and then um, we'll, uh, we'll go from there, okay? So the first thing is the interest, the thing that I'm really interested in are projective varieties. So what a variety is, is it's a solution to a set of algebraic equations. Um, so the first thing that I need to do is I'm going to have to make a set in which I'm going to look at solutions inside of it. So I'm going to do this in what's known as complex projective space. So um, I so so let me explain what a projective space is. So first off, I take a complex vector space, say an n plus one dimensional one, and then I'm going to cut out zero, the origin. And then I'm going to glue all lines, or I'm going to make the I'm going to glue with this equivalence relation. So I'll say that a vector in C n plus one is equivalent to another vector in C n plus one if and only if there's a scalar uh, multiple. There one's a scalar multiple of the other. So in in some sense, what the projective space is telling me is the space of all lines going through the origin, because anything that's on the same one-dimensional linear subspace is going to be glued. Okay. So this will give me a well-defined kind of compact closed object in which I can look at spaces of uh, solutions to polynomial equations, but only certain polynomial equations. Uh, this is, <laughs> dear, just video is very distracting to me. <laughs> okay, so I think it's stabilized. All right, so, so now I'm going to take a set of homogeneous polynomials. 
Uh, and what that means is I'm going to require, uh, can you see my mouse? Can someone give me a thumbs up if you can see my mouse? Great, thanks. So um, here what, you, what you're gonna do is you're going to take a set of polynomials that where the degree of the polynomial in multiple variables is going to, is just gonna be degree K. All of the monomials are gonna have the same degree, okay? And then that allows me to choose something that is going to, where this, if something is zero, like evaluates to zero for this f, it's going to evaluate for zero for any scalar multiple. Like, so when I choose a representative inside Pn, then all of them are going to be zero. So like if I had, if I, if I, so I'm gonna look at the space of all points in Pn for a homogeneous polynomial that uh, evaluate to zero, okay? And one can check that this is well defined by if if I put lambda y i on here, then it's all just going to give me like a lambda to the k pulled out in the front. So this is well defined. So so this will give me some really nice uh, compact object that can be very curvy, and um, I, I want to understand what the geometry of these things look like. Okay. So. One way that geometers look at the spaces like this is that they um, they make invariants. In, in other words, some algebraic or um, some numbers that tell you about the qualities of the space. So the first one if the that people really think about is Euler characteristic. So Euler characteristic for surfaces is just this v minus e plus f that you might be useful uh, used to, where you take vertices and you subtract edges and then you add faces, right? So you can tell that any of these things that uh, look like topologically a sphere all have the same um, Euler characteristic. So you know you take four plus six, four minus six plus four that gives you two. So so you you're, that you can deform them and um, you'll you'll still have a sphere and all of these different triangulations give you the same thing. So it's an invariant on the kind of topo topology of this. But you need some type of higher dimensional thing, right? When I was talking about these projective spaces, they're all in n dimension. I, I, I can vastly generalize, right? So here I can do the same thing for higher dimensional spaces. I just make simplices rather than just triangles. So I, I take vertices, edges. I take, instead of faces, I take triangles. And then I can continue with a tetrahedron. And then I can do a k-simplex by just adding a new point and then taking the convex hull with that new point. And that allows me to define an n-dimensional, um, an invariant for an n-dimensional space known as the Euler characteristic, which is just the alternating sum of the number of k-simplices in this triangulation that you make. Okay, are there any questions so far? Okay, great. All right, so uh, what, what, what are the kind of projective varieties that I'm really interested in? Uh, they're known as labial varieties. So mirror symmetry originally, uh, it's much more general, is a duality between complex dimensional Calabi-Yau varieties. Uh, these are roughly projective varieties that satisfy certain degree properties that make them locally flat, as it were. Okay. Uh, and if you've taken differential topology, then you can think of these as not like uh, as smooth, compact Kähler varieties that have a non-vanishing holomorphic N form. And if you haven't, then just vibe with that, I think. Uh, it, it, it's fine. Um, like, just think, uh, the, these are going to be written as some space of solutions to polynomials, OK? So the first one is if I take uh, the complex projective 2 space, and then I take a cubic uh, polynomial, and then I get a donut. I get this elliptic curve. And one can compute that the Euler characteristic of this thing is zero. And this is a really fun exercise. If you just take a donut and then, uh, well, maybe not like an actual donut, maybe maybe make a donut, like, like, and like just triangulate it, like make a make an inner tube or something like that. And then like, just take a marker, triangulate on it, and then you'll get that it's zero after you compute this, right? Uh, and then maybe a more difficult exercise is taking a quartic equation uh, that gives you a it's in complex projective four space, and um, you'll get something called a K3 surface, and its Euler characteristic is 24. And uh, this is a lot harder because this is a four-dimensional object, and I have no idea how you're going to take a marker to a four-dimensional object. Um, but uh, you, I, I encourage you to try, but I, I have no idea how to do this. So this is how it gets a little bit more complicated, right? So so then, uh, the, the lastly, if I, if I take a Calabi-Yau 
Uh, so that's the, that's the complex dimensional two space or, or, or two ver like when I say in complex dimensional Calabi varieties, I mean like it's in is like equal to two here. So that means it's a four dimensional real space. Okay. So 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 then when I go to dimension three for Calabi L, then um, I can compute these in cases, but I, I I won't always get the same answer. It becomes a very wild question here. Okay. So this is where the first kind of experience with mirror symmetry happens. So what you find, uh, right, so this is what I'm saying. So, so examples of these, so an example of each of these kind of collabial varieties can be written as I take a degree n plus one uh, homogeneous polynomial in n plus one variables, and then I look inside, uh, look at the solutions inside complex projective in space, and I get a dimension n minus one collabial. But there's many more ways to construct these things. This is just like a, an example. And um, here, what we find is for these Calabiales and three, and the, the mirror symmetry um, provides us a new uh, relationship in odd dimension. For example, for any Calabiale variety X of dimension N, there exists another uh, Calabiale X check so that um, the Euler characteristic of X is equal to minus one to the N of the Euler characteristic of the so-called mirror to X. So this is the first kind of example of a mirror symmetry uh, relationship. Um, when this was found back in 1989, the Calabial threefolds were generally thought to probably have um, negative Euler characteristic more often than not. Um, however, this says, well, it should happen the same number of times for the for in, in the opposite way too. So topologically, it was very um, surprising that you could construct as many um, positive Euler characteristic Calabial threefolds or three dimensional Calabials as um, negative. Okay. And, and, and the thing that's fun about this is you have to find them, right? So, so constructing them is kind of crazy, right? So here, you know, you have X, if you take the original quintic polynomial in P4, you get the other characteristic of X is equal to minus 101. But then you can find the mirror by taking a quotient where you glue um, things with respect, orbits with respect to a Z mod 5Z cubed action on it. And then you smooth it out in some way, and then you find this. Okay, and that's the first example that was found. Um, so then, this is just the first manifestation, but that you that now we that now we have multiple ways otherwise to see mirror symmetry. So we have ended up over the last thirty years with this giant table of examples of mirror symmetry. So. Depending on what you're interested in in geometry, you can land on different pieces of mirror symmetry. So you get to kind of choose. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these things in it, but you you can choose if you want to think of a numerative geometry and uh, integral uh, and in, encapsulate that inside the integrals, or you can think of things categorically and uh, find algebra homological algebra that gives manifestations of mirror symmetry. Um, so you can kind of choose your own level of uh, that you're going to do. And then what, what, so as mirror symmetrists, what we're looking for is new invariants and objects that will have a mirror symmetric phenomenon, uh, more manifestations with more examples, and um, what applications these things may have, that this relationship may have. So it's kind of a fun, choose your own adventure type of field in this way. Um, and, you know, the, the, the thing is, it's coming from physics. There's no uh, rigorous way to say, what is mere symmetry, right? So, so it's, it, it, there, there's kind of a vibe that people in the field say, oh yeah, that should be a mere, that should be something that's related to mere symmetry, right? And um, as queer people, we kind of know about this like vibe, right? So, so this is kind of like, like what we do, right? Like all of these things are queer in some sense, right? Like not sitting the correctly, um, you know, iced coffee, walking fast, eating a garden, or I, since this is hosted in Canada, I have to make a mention to the critically acclaimed yet um, overlooked emotion album of Carly Rae Jepsen, right? So. That's very important, right? Okay, so 
the, the, roughly my career is essentially doing this. Um, just the, this meme kind of explains how I think of uh, mathematics a lot of the time is I, I try to find something cool and I say, well, can I find mirror symmetry here? Right. So one question in mirror symmetry is like the, 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 the mirror to the quintic threefold was very ad hoc. It, it was like, why should it be this? Z mod five Z quotient that I then smooth, right? So, so one of the key questions in mirror symmetry is given a Clavion manifold, how do I find its mirror? Okay, so this is something I thought a lot about when I started off and, and I still do. Um, and the and there, there's no answer in general, right? So roughly there's an intuition that you should think of, uh, you should try to split it in half dimension and think of it as a vibration where each of the fibers are some torus and then you want to replace that torus with a dual torus. But doing that is like very not computable a lot of the time. And, and, and then also we haven't classified all Calabiaus, so you can't even do a matching problem. And also like people will just construct new mirrors because that's what you want to do. But then their recipes will often overlap in context uh, and then, or they'll work in different contexts and there's no overarching framework. So these are big problems in the field. So what happens is you end up with some type of the uh, kind of landscape, uh, as, as this painting is called, a landscape of Calabria manifolds, uh, where you're trying to find all of them and you're trying to relate all of them here. So a huge problem is how are we going to match them and how are we going to construct all the ones in the middle that we haven't found? Okay. And, but one thing that's kind of interesting in this painting is you can see that this, 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 this one is vibing with two relationships, right? There's two links. And this can happen with different mirror constructions giving different mirror Calabias. So one big problem in the field is finding what's the right mirror, right? So th this is one of the things I was questioning when I was, when I, when I started, right? And um, I, I figured out that the problem with this this wasn't the problem. The problem was the question, right? So this is so the problem is the word right. Um, so the, so this is the, one of the big things that I got really interested in mirror symmetry is if you recall this last line of this table that I just kind of flashed at you um, is that there should be a relationship between um, for categories given by mirror symmetry, in particular the. Fukaya category, whatever that is, I'll let uh, Katrine uh, focus on that later. <laughs> I'm just going to push it back and you're muted so you can't say no. <laughs> no, I mean, like, that. don't worry about it. This is just, I'm just going to black box this. Let's not worry about it. So, uh, right. So, um, the, uh, so then you have the, the, the Fukaya category on the A model, and then you have the B model that's the drive category of coherent sheaves. So given a Calabial X, there's supposed to be two that are going to give you, like, I, I need to figure out which drive category is the right one, All right? But the, but the issue was the, was the word right. So what I focused on in my work is that if you take a bunch of different constructions, the mirrors all give you equivalent drive categories. So this allowed me to actually use mirror symmetry as a tool in order to find new relationships between different Calabial varieties. Um, instead of proving, trying to prove mirror symmetry, you can leverage it in these following ways. So what you find is a kind of spectrum of solutions, right? And in this type of program of trying to find a unification of mirror symmetry conjecture, uh, constructions using it at the level of categories is something that's very crucial in my work, okay? So um, the, the so one the, this is the main theorem that that I wanted to kind of give you today is um, that if you can take that the mirror constructions should not be viewed as like what's right or what's wrong, but how can we use them together and create like a kind of productive community between these things? Okay. And um, one thing that was kind of hysterical when I started this is um, some of these constructions weren't even self consistent. <laughs> like. It was kind of amazing. It would give you multiple uh, answers, and then you would, uh, and, and then you'd have to say what's happening, right? So, so this is a, uh, uh, yeah. So no, yeah. Uh, mirrors are not monogamous. Uh, they're, they're 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 vibing and kind of a messy commune. Um, so all right. So um, and, and and there's a new result this year in this line from my PhD student Emmerich Malter, who you all should hire. 
uh, that, that, that this is continued and, and finding new examples uh, for complete intersections in Tori varieties. Okay. What, what's my next slide? Let's go. Right. So how does the proof go? The proof goes by not thinking about Clavials, but instead looking at Landau Ginsburg models, which are um, Ron's new favorite thing. Uh, so the uh, these are a triplet of data, which are really scary names, but it's a, it's just three things. It's just an affine space, a group acting on it, and um, W is just an algebraic function that's G invariant to C. And then the geometry of a space is encoded in the critical points of this function. And what we find is a way to uh, that all the different mirrors can be written in a way so that you can just vary the way that one makes this geometric quotient because you want to throw out certain bad orbits uh, from this from this uh, from this quotient space. And when you choose different ones, then then you end up with the kind of space of different types of mirrors, and they all kind of land into this if you make the right landau ginsburg model. So the art is making these right landau ginsburg models. Okay. So in essence, um, the mirror is the intrinsic information of the um, of the landau ginsburg model, and the way that it presents in the mirror constructions uh, is just based on different contexts. So it's it's like when it chooses a different construction or recipe that it's going to look like, it's essentially this intrinsic Landau Ginzer model code switches to make uh, the, um, the, 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 the construction happy, right? So something that as queer people, we know little about is code switching, right? All right, so, um, you know, one thing that I wanted to end with is um, talking about kind of finding your space in mathematics as a queer person. Right, so so mirror symmetry I love um, because it has such a great blend of pieces of mathematics. It has algebra, geometry, theoretical physics, combinatorics, topology. It has aspects of number theory in it. It goes all over the place. Uh, in uh, yeah, it, it even has aspects of analysis if you if you so desire want to to blend into those things, uh, which I try to avoid and never fiber my being. Um, and um, the good news is it's very diverse. You know, my Gemini heart is very happy. Uh, but uh, but the bad news is that it's hard to get a foothold as a new person in the community. Um, and the way that this is done is is it's often done through collaboration with uh, with wonderful people um, that you get to have a meaningful interaction with. But the, the 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 difficult part about that is that you that it's almost required to collaborate. So. The, the, the it becomes difficult um, for people in underrepresented minorities or groups like um, because the the community is big and global and you need to make long lasting important connections as an openly queer person and it take it's harder and slower to find people that you feel safe with that are allies that you can work well with and you know Research collaboration, a thing that I think is important to say to, uh, you know, collaborators or people that haven't been in the mathematical field uh, that are, are just starting out is research collaboration. It's important to be, to have a place where you feel okay to be vulnerable, okay to say, I don't know, be, be confused together um, and have those emotions and work together and it's important for you to feel safe when you're doing this so that you can focus on the mathematics with all of your brain rather than having nagging thoughts in the back. So this is one of the things that I found difficult and it took me a little bit longer to get, but one, you know, I, I, right now I have this beautiful chosen mathematical family. And you know, the, these are a bunch of my co-authors and collaborators that I really, appreciate and they span all sorts of parts of mathematics from number theory to symplectic geometry to uh, mathematical physics to tropical geometry to combinatorics to derived categories and, and and one thing that's important about this is that the the positive and meaningful collaborators are not found overnight so uh one thing I, the, the parting thoughts that i have um with this are that um Mirror symmetry is very cool. You should all do it. Be gay, do mirror symmetry. Um, 
in collaborative global research fields, it's important that to acknowledge that people in groups uh, that are oppressed more broadly globally um, will take more time to find their place in the global collaborative marketplace and that they lose out opportunities um, because many feel unsafe going to where all the conferences are in a global conference space. Um, and some networks uh, get cut off from them. You, not everyone gets a chance to connect to the every part of a research community when they're operating as an openly queer person, openly queer or trans. So it's important to allow for those that are going to have a um, slower start to have the time and have the opportunities to find these meaningful places. And it's important to understand that you know you you, you have to find the right collaborations in order to do deep work. And some of those places are going to be closed off for, for, for queer people. And, um, but with time, it can be solved and with funds. So I, so I think that this is one of my main kind of points towards this is that uh, one needs funding, platforming, safety, and space in order to build deep collaborations for LGBTQ people. All right, I think I will stop there. I think I'm under time. Great. Thank you for your attention.